today I am here with Drew from Coro here in the Chicago office, and he's going to talk to me about fishing. Hi, Alana. Hey, Drew. Uh, my name's Drew. I've been with Coro for almost two years now, and I've been in the cybersecurity industry for a good amount of time. I'm excited to connect with you today. That's awesome. I'm really excited to talk about fishing today. So to start off, can you just explain to me what phishing is? Absolutely. Uh, phishing in its modern sense started in about the 1990s with AOL. When AOL mailed out all those DVDs is when phishing really started to gain in prevalence. And it started out as a really basic concept of trying to impersonate somebody to get them to kind of do what you want them to do, right? A lot of people have seen the email from their CEO asking them to send them some gift cards or something of like. Uh, that's kind of how phishing got its start. Interesting, I didn't know it started that early on. That's crazy. And what does it look like today? I know I've heard a bunch of different kinds of phishing. What is it, how has it expanded and grown? Yes, so phishing has really evolved a lot. And there are so many different types of phishing now to where they have almost taken on some of their own lives. So uh, everyone's probably familiar with catfishing. That's a very specific form of phishing. There's spear phishing, there's smishing, which is sending text messages as a phishing attempt, and uh, various uh, attempts in between all of those different ones. The one that we most commonly see today is the mass blast email that is trying to have you click on a link in an email or send some information uh, based on what the request is. So my question is, everyone knows what phishing is, especially in email form. How is it still working? How are fishers still finding success? Why is it still happening? Yeah, uh, phishing is one of those things that will unfortunately never go away. It's a very low cost attempt for a threat actor uh, to reach as many people as possible. It really costs pennies on the dollar to send out thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of emails to a list that might be purchased from the dark web. Uh, we see and hear of data breaches every single day of companies that have emails or information that's, uh, that's leaked out onto the public internet. And so a lot of threat actors, they'll take some of the information that's available from public access, and then they'll craft very specific messages and distribute them out through email. So it's a very low barrier to entry to get a really good return on that investment. So you'd say it, def it still works? Yes, it will unfortunately always work. I have a grandmother, you have a grandmother. Uh, threat actors know the highest likelihood of people that are gonna be susceptible to those types of things. So unfortunately, if there's always an audience that's susceptible to click on something that they know that they shouldn't be, there will always be phishing. So when it comes to an SMB um, company, what specifically should they look out for in regards to phishing? Yes, there's a lot of things that a company really should be doing to help address the threat of a phishing scam. Uh, not only training their employees to always understand what they're clicking on, uh, trying to recognize the recipient to those emails as legitimate recipients. Those are always very effective tools. Education is really the first place to live, but now there are a lot of automated tools and AI that's making sifting through this massive amount of data much faster and much more efficient in terms of determining what is a real threat versus what might be a perceived threat. And so tools now are making it a lot easier for IT directors to sift the, the wheat from the chaff. That's so interesting. How, have, how has AI affected um, phishing and then phishing methods? Yeah, it, it's kind of gone both ways. It, it, uh, AI tools have done a really great job at limiting and almost eliminating in some cases the threats that do get through. There will oh, wow. always be a threat that gets through. And then on the, on the opposite side of that coin, threat actors are always trying to get better and better at being one step ahead of the defense that's trying to stop them. Whether it's a more targeted attempt of phishing, which is spear phishing, mm -hmm. which is coming from uh, multiple different angles to target one individual. A good example of spear phishing is going after CEOs uh, because they're very targeted. You have as much information as them. You may come at them from an email, a text message, maybe even a lot of spam phone calls. Um, so that is one way that the threat actors have evolved and tried to stay in front of the defense, but the defense is always getting better. Interesting, so it'll be the same threat actor coming at them from different angles at the same time. Absolutely. That seems like it would be effective. Absolutely. Crazy. 
Okay, so you mentioned that there's a number of different kinds of fishing. Can you get it, get into the details on what some of those look like? Sure, sure. Uh, they have evolved over time into more specific attempts to uh, target an end user. Uh, smishing is one of the more recent ones, and everyone has probably gotten one of these over during the COVID time where you're getting a text message uh, that's unsolicited, and it may come from a, a contact that you're familiar with. It may say, uh, hi, I'm, I'm your CEO, and I can't get into my account. I need you to wire me credit cards immediately. That's a very effective text message approach to, to phishing. Um, and we see a lot of attempts to that. Uh, uh, cell phone providers do their best to stop those types of things going out, but that's, that's a real uh, threat. I feel like I get more and more every day. I got one the other day pretending to be my sister. I was like, wow. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is not just targeting businesses. It's yeah. also targeting individuals. Yeah. yeah, interesting. OK, so smishing. Smishing. And then what are the others? Spear phishing. Spear phishing is a very targeted attempt for phishing, where it's multi, it's typically repeated attempts, where it's not a, a regular phishing attempt, might be a one and done type of an email. Okay. Whereas a, a spear phishing is typically a campaign with multiple uh, touch attempts, uh, different origins of the message. It may be a smishing attempt, it may be an SMS message, it may be a phone call that's a fake phone call. Mm -hmm. And some of these uh, fake phone calls, there may be spear phishing attempts and you know what you may pick up the phone and you hear no one answer on the other end of the line that's on purpose they're calling to make sure that that phone number that you have is a legitimate phone number that you answered it after you answer that phone call they'll attempt a smishing attempt send you some text messages oh, interesting. so all of these things really kind of key into the next layer of a spear phishing campaign good to know um, okay so there's spear phishing smishing What's another one? Well, catfishing is what you might see in social media or on reality TV shows. Dating apps? Dating apps uh, uh, all over the place. Does that apply in business? It can apply in business. We've seen some, uh, The it may not be the traditional approach of trying to uh, create a relationship with somebody, mm -hmm. uh, but it is the attempt to legitimize a contact, become buddies with that person, and then over time uh, take advantage of the relationship that you've developed and exploit it. So with all these different ways that threat actors can attempt a phishing attack on a company or employees within a company, what is the best way for a small or medium-sized business to protect themselves from threats like this? Yeah, uh, every organization needs to take uh, action against these types of things. Whether they don't feel like they're getting a lot of them right now and they don't think that it's a big threat or whether they are like every other organization or person on the planet getting a lot of these emails every single day, they need to take action. And now there are tons of tools available to uh, people of all uh, uh, different uh, breadth of business, whether it's an SMB, whether it's a large enterprise, whether it's an individual that owns a business just for themselves. Uh, there are a lot of tools that make it easier to identify the emails as they come in, flag them. Uh, one thing that a lot of people may misinterpret as security is using Google or uh, Outlook as just the only provider for their email security. That's really not the right approach in today's uh, landscape in that uh, threat actors are very sophisticated and they know basic ways to circumvent some of the basic security items in Gmail or in Outlook. So a lot of organizations uh, that are in the cybersecurity space have implemented industry leading best practices by uh, looking at some key frameworks in the cyber cybersecurity space, things like the MITRE framework or uh, NIST and understand the key components within a business to protect. So a phishing attempt comes across typically in an email. So as an IT director knows that they need to protect their email, but they also know that they need to protect that instance of their business from the repercussions of an email. You know, uh, I could have uh, every window and door in my house completely locked, but a person who is determined to get inside of my house will figure out a way to get in. And whether that's phishing attempts over time, so the real good approach for organizations to secure themselves against phishing is not just securing themselves against the email attack threat vector for phishing, but understand if an email is successful in a phishing attempt, what am I going to do downstream from that that's going to correlate to help me protect against just the phishing attempt? That's where Coral really stands in. And not only looking at email boxes, 
devices and email security, user access controls. But once a, let's say a, a hypothetical threat does get clicked on and malware is downloaded, really Coro differentiates our process with looking at the entire threat vector. And so the really advanced email security providers out there, they're not just looking at email anymore. They know that email is a major threat. It may be the number one threat that focus, that, that threatens a business, but now uh, businesses are getting savvy with using the right tools to not just protect against one area, but know that that's the primary area. How do we protect downstream from that? Thanks so much for talking about phishing with me today. I've learned so much. Absolutely, thank you.